competition this season is heating up, and so I don't know if it's at the same level as everybody else. It does look a little bit cheaper. It definitely does feel like a little bit homemade. You know my name, Neon Noir, Neon Noir, on my road to fame. I am happy, coming for your spot, Neon Noir, Neon Noir, now let me show you what I got. I got Hello, my beautiful life brides. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Neon Noir. I'm a half Italian, a half Canadian drag queen, and I am the brightest crane in the box. Girl, if you are new here, or if you haven't already done so, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. So, Drag Race Philippines is back. That's right, the season three promo and Meet the Queens just launched, so I thought we would get into these looks. I personally didn't watch Drag Race Philippines season one or season two, but I did watch UK vs. The World 2 and fell in love with Marina Summers. On top of it, a bunch of y'all have been telling me that I need to watch Drag Race Philippines Philippines, so I thought I'd get started with season three. So let's get into these looks and play my favorite game. That is right, it is time to play Fab or Drab, where we rate the looks of Drag Race Philippines season three and let you know which looks are fab and fabulous or drab and awful. And make sure to stay tuned all the way to the end where I let you know who had my fab and drab of the week. This promo theme is a black and white. And even before we get into it, I love this promo. We've had so many crazy concepts, but something like black and white, which is simple, we have not yet seen. So I am so excited to get into it. So without further ado, let's find out who shined bright and who faded into obscurity. First up, we have Angel and Angel is coming out in this half white, half a black angel look. She's coming out in this rhinestone bodysuit with these giant angel wings. She's paired with a blonde hair and this headpiece. Mama, we are starting off strong. First up, these wings. These wings are so big and luscious. And girl, I've looked into getting wings and wigs are expensive to get made. Then she's paired it with this bodysuit and sometimes people are like, oh, a bodysuit, but this is not an ordinary bodysuit. It's got all of the crystals and rhinestones and everything all over it. It definitely looks expensive and definitely look put together. She then paired it with a blonde hair and a sort of a little headpiece. If you watch any one of my videos, you often hear me complain about people having flat hair that touch the costume. But in this case, it really works because it kind of gives you that like sexy angel demon gal, you know, a little bit of that Halloween vibe, but super elegant and super over the top. I even love this headpiece. Personally, when it comes to headpieces, I just generally like them really big. But when you have these big wings, this sort of like dainty headpiece really works. On top of her, it gives her a little bit of height and gives her a little bit of that like classic showgirl Vegas vibes, which I'm also really into. On top of it, she looked sexy AF, showing all the leg and all the skin in all the right places. All in all, this is a amazing start and she looked amazing and definitely gonna be a Next up, it's Jay Quinn, and Jay Quinn is coming out with this a white dress with this black corset. She then paired it with this black and white jacket cover up thing, and there's a black hair in the shape of a moon. First, we need to talk about this hair. This hair is amazing. It's this sculptural piece that looks like a moon and it's got rhinestones on it. It definitely feels really elegant and really expensive. Then we get into the dress and the dress is a little bit meh. I mean, it's not a bad dress. It's just nothing that special. I do like that she decided to rhinestone this corset to reflect the rhinestones that are in the hair and definitely giving you sort of that continuation. She then also got black at the bottom of her dress to again, give you those layers. Speaking of layers, she definitely got all the layers in the jacket as well. Personally, I feel like this could have been zhuzhed up a little bit more had this jacket been even the same thing, but maybe more done in an ostrich feather or maybe just done a giant boa. I think that would have really helped because it feeling like all the textures are really the same. And I think that that's what's making it feel a little bit less successful than some of the others. I do think that this belt corset that she has on really draws your eye into 
into that section and that's not necessarily a section I want to be drawing my eye in. So I wish she would have brought some of like the stones or something up to the neck to really draw yourself to the face because the face is painted to the gods. The other thing that I think she could have done to just naz it up a little bit is she's done rhinestones on the hair, she's done rhinestones on the corset. I wish she would have done rhinestones on the bottom of her dress to really just give you that triple layer. There is a few things I would have done differently, but ultimately this isn't a bad look and definitely still gonna get a pop. Next up, we have a John Fidelega. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. And John is coming out wearing this uh, big uh, black ball gown with this giant sort of uh, frilled uh, shoulder piece that kind of turn into uh, wings with this uh, tall hair with these rhinestones in it. This look, oh my God, let's get into it. I love that she decided to go with a ball gown. This definitely feels a little bit more like finale eleganza more than it does promo look. And you know what? I don't care because a promo you're supposed to stand out from the crowd and everybody's gonna do black and white so how do you stand out with black and white and she did it with just the largeness of this costume she's got the big dress at the bottom and she's got these big shoulder pieces these shoulder pieces with the frills on them are super elegant and super elevated she's then paired this with hair that is coiffed high with rhinestones in it. This is the type of hair that I like to see with this type of costume because not only is it super elegant and coiffed, but it takes it away from the face and it takes it away from the costume. So each piece gets its moment. I literally have no notes and because I have no notes, it is definitely gonna be a bow. Next up, it's Kiana, and Kiana is coming out in this white corset with these big black spikes coming from her breast and her back. She then paired it with this black skirt dress with more spikes coming out of it. She's got spikes as her headpiece, and she's holding this coat. Girl, now this is a concept. She decided to go a little bit more punk rock with this, giving you a little bit more edge, and definitely going different from all these other gals. I don't know Filipino drag that much, but it definitely feels like the Philippines would like to go a little bit more womana. And looking at me, you know I love a little bit of a club kid vibe, and this has got club kid energy into it. The spikes definitely make it feel a little bit more avant-garde, a little bit more club kid, but still keeping it elegant, sophisticated, and cool. I love all the spikes. It's giving me Jean-Paul Gaultier Madonna vibes, but taken to the extreme. This is a look I want, and you you better believe I'll be googling who the designer is of this dress because it is totally my type of drag. All in all, if you haven't guessed already, it is definitely going to be a fuck. Next up, we have Maxi, and Maxi is coming out in this a white a dress with these black and white florals on it. She's then paired it with like a mesh black a gloves and a short black hair. She is definitely giving you real woman vibes. If you watch my videos, you know I often complain about people's wigs. I say they need to be taller, they need to be bigger, they need to be off the head, but somehow, even though this is a small wig, it totally works with this look. This wig makes it feel like a real woman coming out of an elegant gala and that's what the dress is giving is definitely giving you sophisticated woman uh, vibes i also like the black gloves with it it definitely feels like somebody's coming from a gala it the whole aesthetic uh, works together now would i have liked to have seen a little bit more of course i would a few rhinestones on the gloves maybe a little bit taller hair but that is just my personal taste because there is absolutely nothing wrong with this look I love the gradients and I love the play on florals. So it's definitely going to be a bow. Next up, we have Minx Chanel. Minx Chanel is, de is coming out in this a black and white uh, dress and she's then paired it with blue hair. Girl, this girl cheated. She said, you know what? You want me to do a black and white look? I will do a black and white look, but I will cheat with the hair because the hair can be any color and I'm going to make it a blue. 
I love that she is a rebel and decided to go with blue hair because if I was on Drag Race and they told me to do a black and white look, this is some crazy shit I would pull off because at the end of the day, my name is Neon and I need a little bit of color. I love that she has found her way to put the color into it. Now let's get into this look. This look is giving me bandana vibes like handkerchiefs because of the pattern that's on the white, but because of this bow and maybe because of this hair, it's also giving me sort of a Sailor Moon vibes. It's a weird clash of things together but I don't hate it. As much as I love that she's a rebel with the hair, I don't think that this hair actually works with this dress. This dress is definitely giving me like haute couture cowboy vibes, while the hair and this bow is giving me sort of Sailor Moon vibes. I think this would have looked better with simpler hair, and by simpler I mean still tall, still extravagant, still the jewels, but maybe just lost the heart, and then done it in black, or even in white, would have worked something a little bit more like what John did. Overall, it's still a great look, but the competition this season is heating up, and so I don't know if it's at the same level as everybody else. Nevertheless, I think it is still great and still gonna get a bow. Next up, we have a pop star, and pop star is coming out with this big black flowy frilly dress with a giant TV on her head. That is right, she decided to go with a black and white television unit on her head because she is the pop star in the television. The dress is definitely giving like a glamour, but like old school glamour, a little bit like mother of the bride or the owner of a Victorian a villa. And then this black and white television on top of her head is definitely giving me camp. This queen is definitely giving you a lot of personality with this outfit. She is definitely showing you who she is and I love that. As I'm looking at the Drag Race Philippines girls, they are all looking very polished and very put together, but they are all serving the same thing, fish. This is the first time that a queen is serving something else and she is definitely giving you that camp old lady and I think this is really fun, really interesting and really unique. Now in the picture, the TV looks really great. It really works with the black and white of the background, but in a picture you can make a lot of things look great. The question is how does it look in a video? And in a video, it does look a little bit cheaper. It definitely does feel like a little bit homemade and I think it could have been elevated a little bit more. I'm gonna sound like a broken record, but I think a few little rhinestones, a few little metal pieces would have really helped here. I think that the TV just doesn't look as expensive as the gown. Now the gown looks expensive. It's very much a vibe. I mean, it's not my particular style, as you can tell, but it is a really well-made and well-constructed uh, garment and it definitely looks really good. All in all, this whole look is very much working for me and therefore gonna get a bow. Next up, we have Tita Baby, and Tita is coming out with this big black and white ball gown. She's paired it with a jewels and blonde hair. This is definitely giving you old school pageant excellence. Now, I don't know how old she actually is, but this gown is definitely giving you a little bit of that like old school glamour, a little bit of that older lady in the boudoir, but definitely like she owns 51% of her business. This is very elegant, very put together. Surprisingly, I like that it is not rhinestoned or anything like that, because it just gives you this more regal vibe. It's a little bit of like the curtains, but draped beautifully beautifully on her. We still get the little brilliance from the jewelry. She's got the bracelet, she's got the necklace, she's got it all going on. The only thing that I feel like this is missing is a crown. I think that some jewels on the top of her head would have really helped because the hair is smaller and so it definitely it would need some little bit of height. But if this was used for a pageant look, especially a finale pageant look, this makes sense because you always want a crown on her head. All in all, I love this look and it's definitely gonna be a bow. Next up, we have a Versex. She's coming out with these fur jacket with these tall boots and these fur boot covers. She then paired it with a little bit of a riding hat and a sort of a ginger hair. Now this one, I'm a little bit confused about. I love this jacket. I think the jacket is very much a moment. And I love this like weird fur boot thing that's going on at the bottom. The thing is, it's not like anything I've seen. So I don't really know how to pinpoint it. It definitely feels like pieces that 
were bought off the rack and put together. But the thing is, is that they are put together in a very stylish, cool way. The only thing that I'm struggling with is it doesn't necessarily read drag. It reads more runway or a photo shoot material because it does photograph well. But I like my drag to be draggy and so it's kind of missing that little additional moment. For example, I don't like when queens go bare chested. It is one of my pet peeves. I don't mind if you have no breasts, that is totally okay. But then I would say, just add a little a bathing suit top or even just like a little bandeau to kind of give you that a little bit of illusion. I felt like that's what was missing on the chest. Now, the riding hat with the jacket and the pieces, all the pieces look great individually, but I don't necessarily know how they go together. At the same time, when I look at it, I still like it. So it keeps me going back for more. Knowing absolutely nothing about these queens, this one is a queen that intrigues me because I really want to see what she's going to be doing next. Now, I don't think that this is particularly the most successful look for a promo shoot, but I don't think this is a bad look by any means of the imagination. She did get my attention. She does stand out from the crowd, which is a big portion of a meet the queens at the end of the day. Even though I'm not sure about it, it's still good enough to get a oh. Next up, we have Yudapota. Again, girl, if I butchered your name, I apologize. I will learn it while the season goes on. But Yudapota is coming out with this like sheer dress with all of these like white and black tentacles coming off of it. And she's paired out with tall black hair. Mama, when this came out, this was giving me avant-garde, it was giving me Lady Gaga, it was giving me runway, and it was definitely giving me chic. I love this dress, I love the nude illusion, it works so well on her skin tone. I love that there's these sculptural pieces that come off of it, it gives you a little bit of those like tentacles, but also like branches. It definitely feels like a sculpture, which I really appreciate. I do find that the hair is a little bit plain with this dress because I would have loved to see some of these pieces intertwined into her hair, for example, but that is like a very small detail. All in all, this is pretty damn perfect. And since it's pretty damn perfect, it's gonna get a bow. And finally, we have Zimba Ding. And Zimba Ding is coming out in this black dress with this sort of pointed hips that kind of give me a little bit of like ocean fish vibes. And she's paired her with tall hair. Now, I don't know what kind of vibe she was going for, but I don't actually care because this is feeling so elegant, so rich, and so textural. I keep looking at it, staring at it, seeing the different textures coming into it. Doing black on black is always really difficult because you don't get that contrast that comes through. So you really have to play with textures and textures she did. This definitely looks better on the video than it does in the picture because in the picture, I find that it does look a little bit flat, but that's what happens when you choose one color. So I think that from a picture point of view, I think it could have used some white into it. But at the same time, I love this dark spooky vibe dress. It's giving me a little bit of that like evil queen, but made fashion. And I think it definitely works. As if the dress wasn't beautiful enough on its own, she's then paired it with this hair. And this hair is such a moment. I love this crazy sculptural hair. Now, I personally wouldn't have paired these two together, but they actually do work together. I find that the points of the hips and the points of the hair really mimic the same shapes and therefore really work. All in all, this is a very strong promo look and definitely gonna be a bop. And that is it for the queens, girl. If you watch some of my other videos, you know that I am usually super hyper critical about these queens, but Drag Race Philippines is really turning it up. I think this is the episode that I've given the most five stars to in my whole Faber Drop series, and it's only the promo looks. I am really excited for the whole season, and I think I have no choice but to do the whole season. But I guess you're wondering who had my fab and drab of the week. So my drab of the week uh, this week goes to Jay Aww. Quinn. Honestly, I gave Jay Quinn my drab of the week, but she still got a fab. She was just my least favorite of the queens. And that's what happens when the competition is this tight, that one of my fabs has the drab of the week. But enough about the negative, uh, let's get into the positive. Who had my fab of the week? So my fab of the week goes to 
Kiana. Honestly, there were so many of them that I really, really loved and so many of them that I gave five stars to that this was a really hard choice. I ultimately decided to go with Kiana because although a lot of them were gorgeous and beautiful, Kiana's was the one that I want to own and is much more my style. That doesn't mean the other ones aren't amazing. No, they actually were super amazing. But when I'm like giving five stars to everybody, I just got to stick true to myself. And this was the one dress that just like, shot me off my feet and I love it. But I'd love to know your thoughts. Do you agree or disagree with my choices? Well, let me know in the comments below. And while you're there, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. And let me know if you wanted me to do the full season. Once again, my name is Neon Noir, at Miss Neon Noir on all social platforms. And I'll see you in one of my next videos. Bye.